appreciate uh, being here, and I'm so excited to meet all Z Zappians. Is that what they call you all? Okay. That's cool. I learned that today. So, uh, but, you know, we're a company. Uh, I just want to talk a bit about us, you know, who are we and, you know, how we came to use Zapier to ultimately, you know, accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Um, so just about us, we're a company that were founded in 2007. We're based right here in Austin, Texas. So this is our headquarters. This is our home. Um, we're completely focused on the sale, installation, and service of electric car chargers. That's all we do. That is our niche. Uh, we are an electrical contractor as well, so we do everything that's necessary to get these chargers going. But really, we're just wildly passionate. We didn't focus on becoming an electrical contractor first and then you know, find our niche. We're built out of a passion for electric cars. So we own electric cars, we drive them, we just, I love talking about them. It's just, I'm a car guy at heart too. So I, I've always loved vehicles and just seeing this innovation happen over time, I just love doing research on it. And so we're just a company built of passionate people that really believe in the core of what we're trying to accomplish. And so, I mean, that's how I got involved. I got my first electric car in 2014 and it was great at the time. It was kind of so new. The dealership was really great about it and said they wanted to pay to have a charger installed at my house. So it was actually the CEO of our company showed up at my house and said, hey, I'm, I'm here to install a charger. So I met him back in 2014 and we just kind of stayed in contact. And uh, I got to a point where I was in between companies and saw him at an event and just put our heads together and said, hey, how can I help scale this out? How can I make accelerate our approach and continue to grow at even greater pace than where we were? So beyond that, the, the deeper core of what we're trying to accomplish is trying to move the needle on climate change, which, which is a really big thing to try to do. But when you look at electric vehicles, the impact that they can have, the positive on many aspects of not just our society, but I think our world, uh, I, that's something that really drives me and gets me up every morning, excited about what we're going to do that day. And so that's, uh, that's what makes us who we are, I guess. Um, but I want to give you visuals, though, too. You know, so if you don't know what electric car charger is, I mean, th this is an example. We do heavy-duty uh, bus depots all throughout the country. There's a lot to it. You know, there's the hardware that you install, but there's also software. We have to make that software work with the vehicles, work with the company and the fleet. Um, so I have people on site doing that. We do simple chargers just at workplace locations or office buildings, uh, different organizations. We also, like I was saying, we don't just do the charger. We have to do everything that makes that charger work. So we do all the electrical panels, transformers, design, implementation to make that and to make it work and scale. And so we have some great partners out there. Like we work directly with Tesla to do a lot of work. Includes the Tesla superchargers, fast chargers that help people in long range driving, uh, and also the showrooms and the service centers all throughout the country. We do uh, kind of service and installation for them as well. In fact, here's a site. I, um, we're doing a lot of what we call multifamily now, where we're working with apartment complexes and uh, co condos. This is actually photos of an uh, install we completed recently at a high rise condo that's only a few blocks from where we are right now. This is one I'm very excited about that uh, a, a lot of people are really in need. Like I said, we're very passionate about what we do. We do service as well, because if the charger gets put out there, you know, anything can break. So it's just an example of one of our ha very happy, excited electricians doing what we do best. Um, but you know what? Uh, I think where we really make an impact, though, too, is just in people's homes. When people are inviting us into their homes to help install this, you know, fueling station, effectively, to help them with their new fun electric car, toy, whatever it might be, family hauler. And, uh, you know, we, we just love doing that. And they're really excited to work with us. So whereas maybe some businesses go there, they're always breaking a problem or breaking, trying to fix, uh, rather fix a problem for someone where it's a tough situation. With us, we, we have really excited customers that, that want this and they're looking for this and, and help them, you know, get, get the most out of their new investment. So our beginnings, I, I saw that great picture we just had up there about such a small beginnings and wow, that really, well, here we are, you know, a simple a couple people in a co-working space here in Austin. And in fact, we actually had our original, all the electrical materials housed in our CEO's garage. That's all we had. We didn't have anything else. So we, we had to make it work. Um, and so we, we've definitely grown quite a bit since then. Uh, but, you know, 
we had to figure out a way that we can help streamline our process and how do we get customers into our system, right? So we have to be digital based, of course, um, whereas traditionally a lot of electro uh, electrical contractors will might have a form on their website, they're really dependent on going to a customer site or commercial or home to try to create a quote and figure out what they're, what, you know, what is the actual scope of work gonna be. But we knew we had to innovate. So creating this form online was really important where it captures all of our customer information, you know, and they could do it themselves on their time and that works best for them, not around our hours, it works for their hours. So we get customer information about their address, details about the car, some information about their home, because ultimately what we'll also do is what's called a load calculation, which means that we're basically, it's a simple calculation to figure out, make sure when they plug in the car that it's not you know, causing lights to dim or causing any issues, it's safe. Uh, and additionally, we're getting these photos. And this is a key part of how we kind of innovate and in how we interact with customers and mainly how we estimate what the job uh, is actually gonna cost and what the scope of work is gonna be, where, like I said, other contractors will have to go on site, spend all that time to get information, figure out what is actually uh, gonna cost, figure out what the parts are gonna be required. And that, that's a time consuming and, and costly uh, process because you're also dealing with someone that's you know, a, a more experienced individual, they're, they're a more experienced uh, electrician. And that just costs more to be able to do that. So to be able to do that in-house uh, at a desk where I can have people focused on just doing far more of these per day, because you're limited by how much you can drive in a day at that point, if you're going to every single location, that, that's too limiting. So we had to innovate and create this. So when we had this process that we started on our website, we use gravity forms, right? So we capture all that information that comes in. And then back in 2016, when I joined, I mean, Google's just running everything, it ran our world. What a great price you know, per person to add to our business. Uh, and that means that we're using Gmail for customer communication, of course, uh, we're using Sheets as our CRM. Uh, so it's, we're just living in spreadsheets all day long. Uh, maybe you're familiar with this process, but uh, other than that, we use it for quotes as well. You know, keep everything organized, uh, as well as our accounting system. That's kind of the foundation of a spreadsheet, I suppose. It started as a, some sort of an accounting or number tracking system, but, the, but that's where we lived, you know? As a small company, you gotta be scrappy, I guess. <laughs> uh, we also use Calendar, of course, to, uh, as far as communicating with the field, so they know what customer site to go to and when, and have that centralized. And so everything being in Google also, of course, we're using Drive. I, you saw those photos earlier, that's where everything's being stored. So we have that in a central location kind of repository so it's accessible to everyone. The problem is it was all manual. I literally, I started there, we had one person nearly their entire day was focused on getting those emails that comes in from Gravity Forms manually and putting all that information into the, the Google Sheet. So the accounting system and then the quote as well. They're creating the folders in the drive they're also putting all those photos into those folders, labeling everything meticulously perfect. You know, if something gets wrong or misspelled, you go in there and you search for it and it, it's just not there. You can't find it all of a sudden. And it was just painful. I was just seeing these things. We're human, we make mistakes. If that happens, everything kind of just ground to a halt. I mean, it, it, it was difficult. So I knew we, we have to do better because we're trying to accelerate the electrification of transportation. And if we're gonna accelerate that, we could get left on the sidelines so quick that we didn't even see it coming. We'll be on the sidelines trying to figure all these problems out when really we should be focused on our customer and servicing more people in a timely manner. Uh, and our purpose, if we're gonna move that needle on climate change, we, we can't wait. You know, so in my mind, I'm like in a race. I have to figure out ways to innovate, to do better, to get things done in, uh, in a more timely manner. Uh, because this EV adoption curve, this is a classic S curve, as they call it in business uh, schools. And so when you have a new industry, it can absolutely increase at a breakneck pace. And we're seeing right now all of the estimates of EV adoption are actually off. So it's happening quicker than what a lot of people have planned or anticipated. So that means that things are growing quicker than we planned or anticipated. So we need to accelerate even greater pace so in my mind, we have to expand nationwide. So we're here in Austin. When I started 2016, we're only covering Texas. That's a big state, a lot of people, a lot of growth, a lot of cities, but we have to think bigger. We can't be so limited. 
So I'm looking at 50 major cities by the end of 2025, which is a very ambitious goal, considering we're only in Texas at that point. We have a lot to learn, a lot to figure out, to work in a multi-state, just being nationwide. So that means every process and procedure must scale. Like scalability is the, the name of the game. And you know what? When I started to tell myself that initially, I, would, I realized I was thinking too small. <laughs> Because you think, oh, what if we're doing double that? Like, double that? How about 10 times that? 50 times this? What about 100 times? I have to think way bigger. So it's, it's really thinking in a way that, what about this looking at a much greater scale, more than I can really uh, understand. We can't have any manual input. That must be gone. We can't have all that, you know, be susceptible to human error. That, that has to be eliminated. And we can't run the business on spreadsheets. Right, that's a little one that I've had to fight internally here and there. Uh, just people hold on to those spreadsheets. They just love it. <laughs> so I had to innovate. I had to do some software searching, finding, figure out what's going to work. I came across Copper, ProsperWorks at the time, which seemed really great for a CR CRM system. QuickBooks Online, which is great, you know, pro product for growing business. Uh, and you know what? It was. I'm glad I found Copper because that's when I first came across Zapier. And I looked at it, actually, I'll be honest with you, I called it Zapier at the time. I don't know why, maybe it just, it just stuck. But Zapier makes a lot more sense. I'm gl glad I got corrected at one point. So. <laughs> so when I saw that quote request form, I, I immediately knew that, hey, I got to start here. We got to start at the beginning of the funnel, the beginning of that process. And immediately, as soon as that Gravity Forms comes in now, we're using the API with Zapier, of course, to put it directly into copper. But that seems maybe like a simple task, but in reality, we have countless custom fields. We got ones that are manual input, or rather like uh, free form open. We have multi-select, we have drop down, we have dollar fields, we have date fields. There are a lot of different ones, and all of them are, need to be centralized in, in this single repository. And so all that comes in into that, and it has to be accurate, it has to be consistent. So, and, and that makes it much easier for us. And, and beyond that, thinking scalability, I realized that as we add more territories and more cities, I need to have a centralized database as far as the zip codes. Because oftentimes with a company, we're dealing with zip codes is our way to figure out what location and what team, what sales rep, what you know, installation teams be handling or working with a customer. And as even I add more teams to a city, I need to be able to assign that correctly to the right you know, sales rep, uh, person, and people internally. Uh, and that does that great with Airtable. Additionally, we're also looking at Google Maps, really important for several aspects, which is, of course, the obvious of just making sure it's in the right location, the right kind of territory, as we call it. But also make sure that my estimating team is going in there and seeing how many miles it is from that local team where they're, where, where they're located. Because if, the, if it's extra travel time, we have to account for that in our quote and make sure we also plan our logistics accordingly so we know how far things are from each other. And again, prior to that, someone's going into Google Maps every single time and then putting copy pasting addresses and trying to figure out you know, how far we're gonna be traveling for this job. So now that, that being automated is huge. Also, I love this Google Drive integration. That, that's key because we live in photos. That is like the kind of the core of our secret sauce. It kind of seems simple, but that, that's what's gonna allow us to scale, especially working with so many people across so many different locations. And so it puts those photos directly into the new folders that are created, consistently labeled, dated, has customer information in there too. Uh, and also, as you saw on that form that I showed you, there are several photos that the customer uploads. Each one has a very unique use and need. Like for instance, the mounting location as we call it. So hey, where do you want your charger located in your garage? Well, it's really important my estimator knows specifically what photo did that customer upload for that use. So now that they know, they can see and understand exactly what the, not only make sure we install it where the customer wants, but make sure that all the materials and you know, everything else that's required to get it there it is properly quoted and uh, priced accordingly. So when we're doing that, creating that quote too, again, back to the secret sauce, I'm dealing with a electrician that is experienced, so their time is valuable. And I really need them focused on the estimating portion of this. So just getting that customer information into that quote, I really don't want them spending time doing that. It, it's not a good use of their time. I need them focused on the unique electrical portion of this work and that alone. 
And so when I did that, I actually did some numbers on this. So prior to Zapier, the average was about 18 minutes per estimate that they were spending. And Zapier saves five minutes per estimate. So that now we're at 38 estimates per day on average per estimator. So that's 13 minutes now per estimate. That's 15 additional estimates that we can get out per estimator per day, which is seriously productive. That's a big deal. So we can get more quotes out, we can get more sales and keep people focused on what they need to be focused on. Now, beyond the input, we also get to the point where we can finally, we've scheduled the installation, which is, you know, we're getting to putting it on the calendar. That's a process, there are multiple steps. Uh, just to give an example, some examples, it starts with a simple email confirmation. Hey, this customer, we just confirmed you for this date, this time. Uh, it also has some information in there that's dynamically populated based on kind of, again, the timing of it. Maybe we add a new message in there about COVID-19 safety, because since someone's inviting us into their home, we want to be respectful of that, you know, their, their safe, uh, safety and the safety of their family, as well as the safety of my electrician. So that, that's what's automated, uh, automatically sent. In addition, it's also a 24 hour reminder, which is really important too, because people have busy lives and they forget and they have family and it's you know, just make sure they show up and we show up and everyone is uh, ready at the time that we scheduled. It seems small and obvious, but if it doesn't happen and it doesn't happen consistently, you know, it will be a problem. So putting information on the calendar too is now standardized. We're able to do that with Zapier in a way that it puts all the information that my team in the field needs, for instance, the, the phone number to call to let them know that we're 30 minutes away from their home. Um, or email, just in case whatever there's a phone issue, uh, exact address. Also, even after our installation, having that Google review link. So they can immediately text that or hand that to the customer and say, hey, would you be willing to put a review online for us? All right, so that, that's just putting all that right in front of it. And you can see, you, we also use the Zapier kind of link uh, URL shortener, which is great. It just makes it fit onto the Google uh, calendar, which is a relatively small footprint. And they're dealing out in the field on phones. They've got iPads, smaller screens. We just we need everything to fit. Beyond that, it's about us getting paid too, right? Because that's, that's what drives the business is money. So we need to get that paid and invoiced uh, out to the customer as soon as possible. And that's all automated now. So it puts it right out there as quickly as possible. So if someone's sick or some, something's not happening, it, it's, I feel much more comfortable knowing that things are getting taken care of and you know, customer can pay in a timely manner, which sometimes is important for them as well, just to meet certain deadlines, whether it's incentives or tax credits. Uh, so they wanna have that as well. And then I love even coming back a two-way communication field. I have a Google form set up that immediately takes the information from the field. So if they're out there at the customer site and the customer changes something, Sometimes maybe it took a little longer, a little less than we originally anticipated. Maybe the material costs ended up being a little different, or perhaps you know something got thrown off, we need to go back again. My team in the field fills out that form and immediately goes to the people that need that information the most. Whether it's a sales rep or people on the invoicing side, they know they need to adjust the invoice. They get that information real time, so we're not bugging our electricians, calling them multiple times per day. How'd this go? How'd that go? What about this? You know, this is just a streamlined way to communicate back to all the people that need it. And as that changes, which it does in a quickly growing company, I can immediately update that. So the right people are added to that email and or maybe taken off. They've changed the roles. And that's just a quick, simple fix for me. And then we move on with our day. And I love what that the power that that gives me. So prior to Zapier, the average was about 20 minutes each sales rep would spend just to schedule an install, just to get all that on the calendar, get all that photos uploaded to a different folder so the electricians have what they need, uh, and just everything that involved that process. So now with Zapier, it only takes five minutes. Huge improvement. So given each rep scheduling about five installs per day, now that's 75 minutes per rep per day that's now available to go focus on hunting down more installs and getting more on the calendar. So it's immediate results there. And I, I just love that. I love saving time. I'm like obsessed with it now. I can't wait to figure out the new Zap. I'm looking into more into web hooks. I'm looking more, I wanna figure out how can I do more? So, and you know, when I think about that, that's where I love this, like, you know, I talk about it, the creative juices start flowing. I see this and I start to think like, it opens up a new world of what can I do with this? I know it can do more. I know I can be creative and it's not just maybe automating or about input. I found that I can actually solve other problems. Um, so an example is I had uh, a couple employees come to me recently and say they had a specific need. Uh, and that was just taking multiple documents and putting them into a single PDF, which 
makes sense. Like in sales, for instance, we're sending a quote out to a customer, especially with commercial, you know, that whatever we put in that email is gonna get forwarded to the decision maker. And you know, if we send to several documents, sometimes they leave things out or they kind of pick and choose what they're gonna send. And as a salesperson, you really wanna control the message and control what communication is uh, sent over to the decision maker. So having it on one PDF and one document allows you to do that. We can control that message. Uh, so, and it could be many different things. It could be a PDF, could be some photos of our installation site with some notes on it, could be a spreadsheet, could be many different documents. Uh, but ultimately, we want to put it all into one. We found also in project management, on my project management team on the commercial side, they had a need for a permitting when we're submitting for a permit request at uh, uh, a permitting authority. Where there's multiple bits of information that we need, just depending on the location, which could be load calculations, line diagrams, just all these different documents that they need and want to be in one document to keep it simple because there's just so much information being you know, transmitted. We want to keep it cohesive. So I was just looking through this. I'm like, all right, I, I gotta get this. I gotta figure this out. What can I do? I can get multiple Adobe licenses, which is costly. And you know, ultimately there's training involved with that. In fact, I, I realized uh, I had a sales rep that was already paying for his own Adobe license just so he could use it for his own purposes, right? To, just trying to get things out the door and, and move forward with business. And you know, I even had one employee that was literally printing everything out and scanning it back into a single PDF. That was the most efficient way they knew how to do it. And I'm like, all right, that, I, I can't handle that. It's against our company mission, what we're trying to accomplish. We're, we're going backwards now. I, I don't like this. So that, that really kicked me into gear. Uh, so I realized we're con currently using what's called Cloud Convert. And it, it's great little simple software that we actually use it for photos. When customers submit us photos, we get HEIC photos, I get JPEGs, I get TIFFs, I get PNGs, just all these different formats, sometimes PDF. I need to put it all into JPEGs, and so I wanted to keep that easy because we have many devices, many people, many locations, and I just want everything to view the same and keep it simple. It's a very universal format. It made it a lot easier to view all that information. So I could add more licenses of that, but it would just, again, more cost. And, and a whole nother software and sign in that I have to get people and signed up for and just move around. It was just, it's more to manage, it's more time. But what I realized is since I've already made these investments, I already had Airtable, I already have uh, the Cloud Convert working. So why not make it so I can just take advantage of what I have and just simplify things. So I just created a simple Airtable form. Uh, employees go to this little, little, little form, they upload the documents that they want to put into a singular PDF, just put in their email address, and within you know, minutes, it, it sends them an email that has everything combined into one. Uh, and I can track it, what's the usage, how's it being utilized, I can have, has a little security built into it as well. Uh, and it was just a way that we use the existing software, existing investment we've already made. It took about five minutes of my time to make that form, and immediately saw better results. It made it easier for everyone, less paper being wasted on the printer, uh, and it just it immediately solved that itch. And I love that, it, you know, makes things easier for everyone. And I can do that in a very timely way that I, I'm all about that with Zapier. So another problem being brought to me where I'm just, I'm trying to think outside the box where I, we get these customers that we see emails get lost in spam. Not unique, right? It just, it happens. We send a lot of quotes out. They have a large PDF maybe. And, you know, it gets, it's lost in the spam filter just because of that. So we realized that when this issue happens, it, it's kind of hard to avoid it. And when we were seeing the issue also arise where a customer would think that we're just ignoring them, or literally we're sending a quote, we're reaching out maybe via phone and they maybe see our area code, they just don't pick up, right? And we're doing everything that they asked us to do. Uh, and then I get a one-star review on Yelp that says, hey, this company is horrible, they never even responded to me. Uh, you know, that, that's painful, that, hurt, that hurts me. <laughs> like, I, I can't let that happen, I gotta solve this. So I started to look at some different solutions on how I can do that. Uh, and I came up with a couple, because at the time we were utilizing Google Voice as our phone system. So we had multiple cities already that were set up in, I have different number for each city, you know, kind of give that local uh, area code, uh, and also have that business entity tied to it. But there was an issue with that. Each number is tied to a single Google profile, so that doesn't work. So if someone's sick or out of town, or just 
unavailable, then we, I can't get in there and see like what information is being sent to the customer because texting is it works really well for this use case. But you know, if I can't see what's happening or help out with that communication, then it, it gets siloed and it gets stuck, uh, which is a real problem. And then, you know, with a different uh, number for each city, I'm looking at a cell phone for each city. No, I mean, that's very costly, very quick. It doesn't scale. Um, you know, they get broken, something happens, all of a sudden we can't communicate with our customers. That just, I, I knew that wouldn't work. And plus, I just wanted more functionality. I need more capability, I need more scalability. I want to solve a problem and then solve several other problems in the process if I can. Uh, and that, that's the expectation that I've set for myself. So now, that's where I found Just Call with Zapier, which was really checked a lot of boxes for me. Centralized management, which is great, comes with it, logs everything inside Copper extremely valuable, centralized, so if someone is communicating with a customer and I don't know about it or wasn't sure if it was happening, I know and I'm very sure and I'm very confident what's being communicated to the customer. Uh, and it automates the follow-up texts. So just the simplicity now where if we send a quote, it immediately sends a text saying, hey, I just emailed you this quote. Go ahead, check your inbox. If you don't see it, let me know or check your spam folder and it immediately increased the engagement and made sure that every single quote, which we spend a lot of time on and spend you know, a, a lot of care and design into making that quote, we wanna make sure it's received. So now instead, in addition, I, I realize, all right, if I can automate these follow-up texts, I wanna automate more with that. Why can't I do a follow-up text two, three days later, right? So being able to check inside Copper if it's been inactive for a certain number of days to immediately use delay by Zapier to just go ahead and send it, uh, that additional follow-up text or email within that time period to say, hey, I haven't heard from you. Did you have any questions? Or did you wanna go ahead and let us know what time works best for you for the install? And all of a sudden, we're just getting this additional engagement that we just didn't anticipate, and it's consistent. It's happening on a regular regimented basis and allows my sales reps, rather than you know, trying to track down customers and chase them down because they're busy too. Like A lot of customers are ready and know they need to contact us, but they're just, like kind of busy doing what they're doing and we, we need to stay in front of them. So rather than us chasing them down, that's all automated now and all my sales reps, they're focused on engaging in an active two-way communication with our customers. Rather than that, again, that typical you know, cat and mouse, we're constantly chasing them down, which, which is a big deal. And, and certainly my sales reps, they wanna focus on selling. That's what we're, we're here for. So when I looked at automation and what, what more can do for us, I also looked at communication but also communication, not just externally with our customers, but also with our partners. So I have a number of partners that came to us and you know, maybe they're, they're giving me leads here and there because you know, depending on the type of company they are, they just get people to say, hey, I need help with a car charger. They send it my way and they just want to know that they're getting taken care of, that the customer you know, is getting you know, the communication they need. Maybe it's, they want to know what the timeline is for the project when it moves forward because they're maybe installing another product or appliance or whatever it might be at the, at the same time. And so I set it up in a way that I can track the sources in copper, but then also give real-time updates to that partner. So they know exactly what's happening immediately as it happens. And even what's uh, more exciting, that spawned to several more conversations where now we're talking about integrating our CRMs. Some partners have Salesforce, so they might have even copper as well. And now I'm, I'm setting up the capability for our CRMs to talk to each other just because there's so much happening on a regular basis. And I tell you, there's no way that would have happened if it weren't for Zapier. There's, I would not be having that conversation. I wouldn't even think it's possible, but now we're, that, that's happening. In addition, a two-way street where I get a lot of customers, they're asking us about solar. Right? So they get an electric car and they think, well, why can't I produce my own electricity? Now I can produce my own fuel for my own vehicle control of my kind of energy future. Uh, and we don't install solar, but we, we just get people, you know, we have a great relationship with them. They trust us and, you know, we, we want to have a, a good solution for them as well. And so I found some partners that I, I really trust and believe in. And so when customers ask for that, it's a simple checkbox in our copper CRM and it immediately notifies that solar partner, hey, this customer is interested. Here's their information. You know, they gave consent for you to reach out to them. And the customer has a great experience because now when they ask for that information and that help with solar, they get it in a very timely manner. It's, it's almost immediate. Uh, and, it, and it helps also the sell through of that solar, which is great. We're, we're all for that. So along with what we realized too, is we wanna provide, elevate the customer experience. We wanna give them more to help them also with this process. So not only solar, but 
there's a lot of rebates and incentives out there for car chargers. Uh, and you know what? It depends on where you live, but depending if it's utility-based or if it's the state or the city, municipality. Sometimes there's multiple. And what I want to do is, since we're already, in some cases, helping people with this, I want to proactively help people. I want to make it easier for them to do that. I want to assist them to speed up that process. So I created a couple you know, zaps that specifically do that. So depending on that location, the utility, it'll automatically send the right email because when that customer goes and requests that rebate, they have to supply specific information. A lot of times that only I have, like permit number or details about the installation, what we you know, actually put into their home. And so I'm giving them that in a regimented way, all organized within our CRM. It gets them to them exactly when they need it to be able to take advantage of those rebates. And certainly we get people that love and expect and want that information. But the thing is, there's a lot of people that also in some cases don't know about those incentives. And so we're actually introducing these incentives to these customers and they see a lot of value in it. And it creates this really positive customer experience where, hey, not only did I work with Smart Charge America, but they helped me save $500 or $1,000 on the installation. They didn't even know that existed. So I'm, I'm always looking for how can we elevate that customer experience. So inside the company, even further, I'm looking at like how much time are we spending on this? How much time are we spending on that? I'm like writing it down as I talk about it in meetings. I'm like, all right, this, this doesn't sound right. I don't like that. And what I identified is certainly we want to gauge with active prospects. Sometimes it doesn't work out, right? We can't win them all. There's going to be some people that walk away or don't get anything installed or maybe they're moving. Maybe we just we didn't fit their needs. So I realized since we're getting such a, kind of a good process of ingraining their information into our system, like whether it's inside of our CRM, you know, accounting system, uh, inside the Google uh, Drive, it's leaving this large dig digital footprint. And all this information is sitting there and it's just clouding everything up. It's just getting all over the place. It's too much. And there's, I realize there's so many folders in there that just shouldn't be in there. We need to move these out of the way. We need to archive it. It might come back or maybe we'll delete it. We'll just, we, we need to age out old information. Uh, and I realized that my, my reps were spending literally about 15 minutes. Every single time we'd mark an opportunity as lost inside Copper, it's in a whole 15 minute cycle of moving folders, updating a system, notifying someone else that, hey, this, go ahead, get this out of the accounting system. And I'm just like, why are we spending all this time on people that don't want to work with us? I don't get it, but we need to clean up. We need to have good, clean data, simple housekeeping, data housekeeping as they call it. Uh, and that's what I, I, I automated. It's just all those processes are now completely consistent across the board. It doesn't get missed, which is the easiest way when we're just moving so fast. Something comes in, hey, Mark is lost and we don't do all the steps. That, that was a serious problem. That's just gone. Uh, in fact, I got new employees now. They, they don't know what they, they're missing. All the processes we used to do manually, you can't even tell them. They're like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know? <laughs> so compliance reminders. Uh, so one of those things that we realize is when, when we're doing compliance, so some of our vendors, we have to submit specific information to them. You know, so if I work with Tesla, they have certain requirements we have to conform to in order to kind of meet their needs as a uh, you know, preferred partner for installation. And we want to do it the right way consistently. So every step counts. We have to do it in a timely manner. Uh, and also, it's important for warranty verification purposes. So since we're installing one of their products, they want to know it was done correctly, what time frame it was done in, so they know the warranty, you know, what that warranty duration start period uh, start time is. <coughs> so every step counts in this, and we have to do it consistently. It's a lot of information to compile, and we're not doing it for every single customer. It's only certain customers that this even applies to. So it's just a simple filter with, hey, have we hit this stage? Does it meet this requirement? And then let's get it out to the right people at the right time. And that's saved, you know, in fact, there are some points where accidentally submitting information when it didn't apply and then not submitting it when it should have been sent. I mean, so it was just back and forth and it was difficult to track and it was time consuming and, and it's just gone now. It's just a, a thing of the past. So every little step counts. Now that's all automated and that's, that's made a significant improvement for us. So where we are today, we're now in 21 major cities throughout the US. 
and we're rapidly growing. This is our growth year. So this is our time where I'm gonna be adding nine more cities this year. We have to get to 50 by the end of 2025. I'm like just obsessed with it. So here are my numbers from last week. 77 Zaps automated 18,635 tasks. I'm like excited when that goes up because I know we're doing good. We're getting a lot done. Uh, so I, I love that email. So whoever does that, thank you. <laughs> So we, we have to get more installs done. And you know, without Zapier, I was looking at it, we would have needed you know, well over 100 employees today just to do what we're doing you know, in our office. So it just would have been unsustainable. We would have been out of business by now. That, that's the reality of it. The amount of people that I'd have to hire just to do all these processes, or we wouldn't do it, and we wouldn't have that customer experience. We wouldn't have that success. We wouldn't have the customer base we have today. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to compromise on any of that. You know, it, it, we have to provide this, you know, do what we do. So instead, we're, today we're thriving with 50 highly productive employees that are really just, we're focused on what we're best at. Now, honestly, I think everyone is able to improve in a way that they're not doing these menial tasks anymore. They're focused on what they love and what they're passionate about. And that, that's what people want to do, I find. And, that, and that's what I'm doing. So uh, I guess, if anything, I appreciate being here and, and thank, you, thank you for being Zapier. <laughs> All right, everybody, as you can see, we have a little bit of time for some Q&A. If you're not sure where the Q&A is, you can open up your Zapier Retreat app. Go ahead and go to the agenda. You can click on this session and you will see Q&A. And we've got a couple, so I'm gonna go ahead and read the first one for you, David. You ready? Yeah, let's hear it. All right. How did your team react to implementing Zapier? Was it easy to get them on board? You know what, at, at first, I think, Everyone was so exhausted by all some of the manual input we were doing. So anything to improve that was a huge welcome embrace for sure. Um, but you know, sometimes I probably the only resistance I ever got was I want to automate this. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to automate this. I'm like, well, why? Like, and I get into that conversation almost like it's, it's too much or I'm asking them to do more than what they prefer. But you know, that's about the only negative. Other than that, it's just a huge smile, a huge relief. And then you get that once and then you never hear it again. So it's a little thankless after that, but ultimately it's the big relief of, hey, I got this. I've, this has been solved and let's move on. All right, so number two, we've got, you freed up so much time by automating your processes with Zapier. What has that allowed you to make room for? Where are you able to focus on now that you couldn't before? So now the focus is more expansion. I mean, that, that's it. So if we, if we really solidify every process and every procedure, and I can make that work across all these territories, because one of the things we learned in our expansion is that there's gonna be a certain number of things that just, we, we get kind of thrown a left or a right, we didn't see coming, working maybe in a particular state. They have unique requirements that are specific to that state for maybe electrical licensing reasons, or you know, just compliance, or just doing business in that state. Uh, and we just kind of get thrown a loop, but I put in place systems and processes at this point to really account for all those anomalies. And now they're not all anomalies, they're a standard process. And it, we just, as we go into a new location, we can focus on that. We immediately uh, kind of adapt the system to work within that new location. So we, instead of worrying about it, we just focus on the expansion. I love hearing that. Uh, let's see, number three, are you the only one who creates and manages the zaps? How do you encourage others within your organization to also automate? Yeah, that's a good question. So I'm obsessed with it. I, <laughs> I love doing it. Like, I'm not a programmer, but I'll be honest, I was like maybe a couple months computer science major and realized it wasn't for me. So I'm def, you know, that's why I like Zapier because it kind of makes uses that part of my brain, but it doesn't hurt that part of my brain, which used to happen <laughs> if I tried to do it myself. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm the only person that does it and just cause I think I'm so focused on it. And you know what? I think that's, it's funny. That's one of the things that worries me about my role in the organization is that because no one really knows how it all works. And if something breaks or something like didn't work as expected, I'm the only person that can really troubleshoot it. So I've kind of pushed a couple employees here and there. Hey, I, I just can't be the single point of failure. I want to go on vacation and not have to worry about bringing my laptop. And I feel like I have to do that now, just in case something happens, something blows up. I mean, my CEO, he's like, nah, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'm mean, like, maybe you're right. Yeah, I like it. 
you know, we, we'll figure it out when we, we get there and, you know, we'll survive. You know, it's okay, a week, a day, whatever it is. But now I've started to get a couple other people involved in the organization that previously were not, just to get them to play around with it. Because I've got the version, I get the team, a couple more people on it. They have broken some things, but then who hasn't? You know, you try something out, it didn't work, that's okay, let's fix it. Um, so that's fine, but I, I'm trying to encourage more people to do it. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way to do it. I'd love to hear about it, but uh, so far it's basically just me. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> on a scale of one to five, how reliable are the zaps that you've made? Tell us more about why you chose that score as well. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as reliability, I think usually when I find there's a reliability issue, it's not necessarily Zapier. It's more about the software you guys integrate with, which I know is beyond your control, which is difficult. Because if I'm interacting with support and something breaks, and you gotta tell me, hey, it's this other guy, no one likes to hear that. I don't like to hear that. I wanna hear, you know, this is the solution. This is it, you got control of it. And, and you know, that's who I'm reaching out to. So Zapier, help me, uh, which you do. I, I see a lot of help with that, but then I, I kind of get booted over to someone else, not out of necessity. It is what it is. Um, and so, the, you know, the, it's like frustrating, but I get it, right? And so, I mean, if anything, I, I'd say if there were like a tighter integration between Zapier and those, you know, software companies. So I know it's usually said to me like, hey, we submitted a ticket with so-and-so software, they should be working on this, or maybe they'll pri prioritize it. Oh, you should also submit a ticket with them as well, just to double it up, and I do that. Um, and sometimes it, it never gets fixed. I mean, I, I still have some outstanding issues right now that I just, I would love to fix. I'm like obsessed with trying to fix them and it is an ongoing issue. And every day that goes by becomes a bigger issue because we're growing. So it just exacerbates and just gets more and more, it festers. And if I have more pressing things and I'm the only guy doing it, now I'm even kind of more fire behind me just coming at me and I, I need to figure this out. So um, yeah, I don't know if that helps, but yeah. I, I, I wanna make it work. I wanna work with the support better, but I, I don't know if I, I can help with that. I, I'd love to talk to someone, maybe <laughs> we can help improve it, but did I, well, did I answer the whole question? Uh, yeah, I think so. And as a member of our support team and on behalf of our support team, I just wanna say thank you for your understanding. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. I think a lot of us out here know exactly what I mean. Uh, all right, next question is, what is the largest barrier you have to expanding to new cities? How can automation and Zapier help with that? Yeah, I mean, I've had some help along the way. You know, there was one point, a um, gentleman that I connected with at the time, the company was called Cyberbytes. It was Alex Bass. And, you know, he, he helped me really streamline things and get it to a point that was more scalable because um, I was kind of more focused on spreadsheets and he introduced me to the databases like Airtable and other functionality that I just didn't know existed. And that honestly took my use of Zapier to the next level. I had a lot of problems prior to that. And that helped me see things in a different way and realize there's a lot more out there. So certainly getting help from someone is key, whether that's you know, maybe as part of a plan to have an expert connect with me one hour a month, you know, like a customer success manager or you know, just kind of the Zapier expert to say, hey, you know, I noticed this, have you thought about this? Or maybe I bring up something. You know, that, that's the type of thing that I think would add value to me to kind of keep it going. Because now I'm so dependent on Zapier, I, I need it. You know, and I've had some people tell me that they can help me out with it and it's just kind of a, it's a large bill, you know, to do that, which it's, they're probably worth it, right? But it's just not my budget. And you know what? I, I kind of want to work with Zapier, the experts. You guys are the experts. I consider you be the absolute foremost experts in it and to be able to help me and enable, enable me uh, to use it in ways that I probably didn't imagine or didn't know was possible. And so if that existed, I, I think that would be immensely valuable. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some pretty awesome experts, not gonna lie. Uh, all right, number six here. How quickly were you able to learn how to use Zapier? Were you able to jump in and easily build your first Zaps or did it require a learning curve? You know, I, it, it was relatively quick, right? So probably the only thing was testing and making sure it worked. Um, I love now that you could have the draft capability. I used to freak out because if I had to change, make a change to a zap, I'd have to turn it off. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I'm scared. I'm, I'm not gonna go back and do all this manual input. It just knowing it just haunted me to have to do that. And now it, it's not the case. So thank you for whoever started that capability. Appreciate it big time. Um, and you know, there's a lot more for me to go back and fix and just improve. Uh, the learning curve was definitely real, but I think 
and I've looked a lot through the archive and looked through kind of the different resources, and I kind of, it leaves me wanting to, you know, what other kind of unique tricks or fixes are out there that I, I just don't know about, you know? So having more examples to show, hey, here's company A, here's company B, or hey, I want to do this, or I want to do that. Here's examples of how others have used it to do that and do it reliably, and or what does it mean to be reliable? You know, what type of issues can you, if I have an issue with this, or semantics, or capitalization, or parsing information, how can I solve that problem? So maybe it would probably look more like a knowledge base that's built upon, what do you want to do? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, that would have tri not only tips and tricks on how to do that, but also what issues you can help avoid, and how, like, you know, other Zapier kind of zaps inside there, tasks can help solve those problems. I think that would be pretty valuable. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, last question for you, David, because we appreciate your time here and we want to get you back to automating. Uh, what would you say to David? Hold on, let me read this. <laughs> okay, I got it now. What would you say to the David who was creating his very first zap? What did you learn along the way that you wish you had known sooner? Get, get more help sooner. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop messing around with this and get some help. Just kind of like... I, I didn't know what I didn't know, and that was the problem. Like, I can say that hindsight now, but I, I didn't know, right? So, and I, again, I have no doubt the more I learned in the process, the more I realize I don't know. Um, but that's exciting, though, too. It's, in fact, that's what I enjoy about our, our industry, EV charging in general, is the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. And it's just, a, I'm all for that. But with Zaps, that's, that's the same thing, too. I, I want help with it. I should have asked earlier, but. You know, if you rely on it and you depend on it, which my business does at this point, it's completely, really, absolutely dependent on Zapier working. Otherwise, you know, again, I got new employees that were added after the automation, so they don't know what the manual process even looks like. If, if something broke, I'd have to teach them how to do something that they've never done before. And that, that scares me, so it's like, I'll bring it to the next level. What do I need to do? I really rely on it, so I don't know. That, Helps with the I question. think that answered that yeah. question. And, you know, shameless plug to our support team. Uh, we are here for you 24-7. So Very if good. you need anything, let us know. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David. Well, I really want to thank you for sharing your story with us today. It was electrifying. Love I'm it. so sorry. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I just want to say it always warms my heart to hear customer stories and uh, hear the very unique use cases that people use Zapier for. Um, and yeah, just thank you very much for thank your time. You. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, David, everybody.